Hey, it's Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and guess what? It is time for another installment of our embroidery sampler. This time, we're working on month 10. Month 10, can you believe it? So this month, you're gonna get off a little bit easier with the embroidery side of things. However, we're gonna do some fun bits with an old heirloom technique called entredeau, or entredeau. Is it entredeau or entredeau? It doesn't matter what it is because we're just gonna make it our own selves. So entredeau is putting something in between two pieces. It's insertion lace and most of the time you buy a roll of it and you put it in your heirloom creations, pillows, bonnets, uh, heirloom christening gowns, things like that. But usually it only comes in white and cream. So we are gonna make our own that matches our embroidery sampler. And you can see the block that I made in my original quilt has a nice little sage green look to it. But this month we're gonna do a little pop of blue. So that is the main thing you're gonna learn this month. But then we are also gonna open up our Bernina embroidery software as well as Bernina toolbox for those of you that do not have Bernina embroidery software. So enough talking, let's get to it. To create this month's block, all you're gonna have to do, as far as the embroidery goes at any rate, is open the design from block three. So your colors and everything should already be put into place because we used this already in uh, block three. And this time, I want you to use a new tool. It's called Polygon Select. Now, Polygon Select will only work if your design is ungrouped. So let's just click on our design and indeed, see how I'm clicking on this and little individual elements are getting selected? If the design were grouped, the entire thing would be selected. So I'm gonna hit the Polygon Select tool and I'm just gonna left click around until all of the bottom flowers are selected. Then I'm gonna hit delete on my keyboard. And now I just have a couple more things to select here. I just wanna get rid of these little green pieces right here. And that looks pretty good. That looks exactly like what I'm looking for. The only thing is I'm gonna pick color film and just inspect my design to make sure that indeed I did get everything in green and it looks like I did. So now I'm ready to save this as my design for block N. If you're using Bernina Toolbox in order to alter your design, all you have to do is import the design that you used from last time. In this case, it was my single hooper from block three, and I am just going to remove some of the designs from this. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. I'm just going to keep the name. And there it is. Let's make this a little bit larger so we can work with this. And now I am going to use the Layers button. That's the button right here. And then that's going to open up my side over here. And now what I want to do is take all of this bit away right here. And then you see here, my layers are all spelled out by color. So I know for sure that I don't want to use any green. So I'm clicking on color one and this green and then hitting delete on my keyboard. And you'll see that that green went away. Now I'm doing this one here, and that's the bottom of the flower. So I'm going to hit delete. That was the outline of that bottom flower. Now I'm looking at um, some of the lilac, and I can see there's quite a bit on here that I can just delete. And when I select it, you can see it turns a darker color, and that, no that tells me that I know I've selected the right thing. Moving down here, I've got quite a few of the darker outlines that I need to delete, and the one at the top of this row is the one I want to keep. So I'm just starting and deleting the bottom up. Okay, so now I've done all of those. Now I'm ready to go down here to my color two, 
and start deleting some of those. And you can see, once again, they turn dark. Now, I want to keep that one. Now we'll get down here to this one. I also don't want to delete that one, but I do want to delete this bottom flower there. So we're going to say delete to that. There we go. And then now we've got some yellow pieces we want to delete. And now we're going on to more outlining that we don't need anymore. And some more green. Now let's have a look. I had to go back and delete some of the blue from up above and some more of my shapes from this, but I'm getting there. Looks like I just have one more piece there. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. So now I'm gonna save this and send it to my stick. Look, I'm at my friendly place. I'm here with my Bernina 880 Plus, and I've got my USB stick inserted into the machine, and I'm ready to pick my design, and it's this one right here. So I want to do a few things with this first. Um, I have hooped my design. I've centered it in my hoop and everything, but the best way for it to fit was me to hoop it sideways, and of course, I don't want to make my block oriented this way. I want it to be horizontal like this. So I am just going to pick the little I button and I'm going to rotate the design and I'm going to do that using the rotate tool. Now that's the same icon that's on all of your machines, whether you have a Bernina 5 series up through the 880 plus for embroidery. Now I'm going to touch the 90 degree button and now that's rotating my design and I'm totally fine stitching it out just like this. You can also see here that the machine is picking the medium hoop to stitch this out. If you'd like, you could also use your medium hoop, but I'm just using the large hoop today. I also have only two layers of a tearaway stabilizer. I think that's going to be enough to um, keep this nice and stable as I stitch this design. So now I'm ready to thread it up, and it's a short little stitch this time. According to my machine, it's only 19 minutes, but let's get it over here and then we'll see for real how long it's going to take to stitch out. Okay, I'm going to slide this on. Now, it's gonna take 20 minutes. So, we're just gonna go ahead and stitch, going through all of the color changes, and then we're gonna be ready to slice and dice it and do our entre dough. We also wanna make sure that the design is centered down here in the hoop. So I'm going to pick my little eye button again and this time I, I don't think I've shown you this one but I'm going to use check and then I'm going to put my um, needle right into the center of my design and over here I can see that it's not quite centered there so no worries I'm going to use my multi-function knobs to move that just into the right position and I might need to put my needle or my foot down there we go. our pretty design all done and nice so what we want to do is insert some entre dough and I'm going to show you how to make that in just a minute I have my pieces drying on the ironing board that I stiffened with Terial Magic and you'll see that in just a moment too 
but this is our design that's stitched out. This is the only piece that you're gonna put in your embroidery module this month. But what you do need to do is take a ruler and measure about three quarters of an inch from the tip right here to here, and then you're gonna cut and do the same thing on both sides. Just lining this up at my three quarter of an inch mark, nice and straight, keeping it even. It actually turns out to be about two and a quarter inches from that center line that you drew. Okay, so there's one side, and then I'm just gonna turn it around to do my other. And you're gonna keep these pieces that you discarded. So don't, don't toss those quite yet. Then ultimately, this piece that we're cutting here becomes four and a half inches wide. And keep that too. All right, we're all set. I've taken the two inches by 10 inch strips in preparation for my entredeau, and I'm doing this while my uh, design stitches out. Um, this is a terial magic. This is more than just spray starch. This is something that will turn fabric into a stiff, papery kind of substance. I'm also using the silicone um, protection that came with my Teflon piece that I use when I iron fusible web on my iron. We, we carry both of these things at the shop. But what I wanted to do is spray this so it's nice and stiff so I can really do a nice job with my entredeau because we do need to get a lot of starch in there. So I am just gonna let this hang out and chill out and dry most of the way. Then I'm gonna take my Laura Star iron and make sure that I add my sole protection on it to kind of get it the rest of the way dry. And the reason why I use the sole protector is because it's Teflon coated and it can be cleaned up much easier than the bottom of my iron. So I've taken the wing needle out of this packaging. Now it's called a hem stitch needle because traditionally that is what hem stitching is. It's doing this like, little stitch that separates the fibers of the material so that it makes a hole. So you can see how this looks like a little arrowhead. I tried to get it closer, there we go. So this looks like a little arrowhead and as it penetrates the material, it spreads it apart, making a hole. So here is my version of the entre deux necessary for this month's block. You can see that little ladder stitch that's created. That's created by stitch number 701. And then I have the dazzle thread by Wonderfill that is held together and held in place while we do stitch number 701 with our number 25 couching foot. And basically, this is the five groove couching foot, but we're only gonna use two of the grooves. So the way that it goes into the foot is there's five grooves. So we're gonna use the one just immediately to the right of center and one just immediately to the left of center. I have my wing needle limitation set and also because I'm using a machine that doesn't have presser foot recognition, I actually told the machine that I'm using a five and a half millimeter stitch plate and that way I'll be able to use this stitch and all of this stuff with the in the most efficient way. You're going to need to use about 36 inches per 10 inch strip like we did here of the dazzle thread. So to show you what this looks like on the spool, this is it here. We carry it here at Bernina of Naperville. And this is an eight weight 
thread and the dazzle has a little bit of metallic in with the rayon fibers they also make this in razzle and that is just the rayon without the metallic fibers and then what you're going to do is you can see here that I've got my strips that I stiffened with the Terial Magic. And see, I told you it was a little bit like paper. Well, indeed it is. So I know that this is a lot wider than I really need and a little bit longer, but it's something that I can use to really help guide this nice and straight because it's important that when you stitch your entredeau that it is very straight. So when I insert my thread into the foot, I'm going to line it up through the little slot where you can get it in the grooves. And then we need to go one notch, just like I said, on either side of the center dip. Then once you get it sort of where you want it, you can lower your presser foot just to kind of get everything nice and tight there. I'm going to put my needle down, actually. There we go. And now that's helping me get everything situated how I need it. So now I'm gonna close my door and I'm gonna get stitching. Just a note concerning some tactile things you need when you're making your entredeau is I like to hold my threads just a little bit so they don't flop around so much. You don't want to go at top speed, which is something that is really difficult for me to not do. Um, and just try to make sure that you're keeping it straight. So here's the one inch mark on our stitch plate. If you need to kind of keep it aligned there just to make sure you're getting a nice straight line, do that. Once you have your four strips together, you're going to cut your pieces a quarter of an inch just from the last needle penetration in your piece. So you're, into, you're going to end up having a strip that measures just about this wide. So the best way I found to trim that quarter of an inch is to use my rotary cutter and my quarter inch mark on my ruler. If you wanted, you could also draw a line and cut with scissors. But there's our little skinny strip that you're going to put on either side of our two contrast pieces. So once I cut all of my strips down, I'm gonna place one of these on top of one of these, so a quarter of an inch, and then I will have my lace insertion, and then ultimately we will sew this onto this piece. All right, it's time to remove our needle and put on our normal piecing needle. And then I'm also going to be lifting my foot and using my 97 foot. And now I've got my little strips to sew together. And I prefer to sew with my entre piece or entre on top. 
So I'm just gonna line this up. Now these are gonna be trimmed down. So don't worry if there's like a mess at the top and bottom. We're gonna trim them down because our piece is ultimately less than 10 inches high. So I'm gonna lower my presser foot. And now we're gonna stitch. Oops, but don't forget to change back to a straight stitch. Pro tip. <laughs> So now we can see how good that looks. And now we're going to sew another strip onto the other side. quarter inch seams. And then finally, one of the discarded pieces. And I'm just going to flip it over so I can sew with the entredeau on top. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. So here's our block, and as you can see, it needs a little fine tuning in the trimming department, but because I'm gonna trim it up after I quilt it, I'm not worrying about that. So um, our entredeau, or entredeau, came out great. You, it really adds a nice little pop of color. So now what I wanna do is use my water-soluble pen, and I'm gonna free, mo free motion draw or free hand draw. Free motion is what we do with the machine. Free hand draw is what we do with our water soluble pen. And I'm just gonna create what would be some symmetric little loop-de-loops here, a little bump that's gonna connect the two. And then once again, the same that I do over here. But we want it to look hand guided and pretty. So I'm gonna start by making my little curve right here above my design. So I just made that little curve. And then because I'm really good at going this direction with my drawing, I'm going to do the same thing over here, kind of using my wrist as it sits on the table as a little compass. So now that's nice in there. So now I want to kind of just draw a loop-de-loop. and then a loop-de-loop -loop here. And I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. There we go. And now I'm gonna try to make a loop-de-loop -loop over here. Similarly, okay, that looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna repeat it over here. So, 
Here comes our loop-de-loop. And now I'm coming up this way and making a loop. There we go. Lovely, beautiful, gorgeous. And now meeting our design together here. All right, so now that's what I'm gonna do with my couching. Before I finish my basting, I just want to show you, there are little holes, as you can see, in our entredeau piece. So I'm going to just lift this up and cover it with just a scrap piece of what I'm using for the backing. And then that way my batting won't creep through my entredeau. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then I'll just add my backing. So I'm going to use the 72 foot with that couching insert. And once again, just like you saw me do this, I believe that it was block eight. I'm feeding it through the bottom there and putting my foot on. Then I'm going to just follow those lines I drew for my, I suppose, I call this a Chantilly lace kind of design but I'm gonna do my straight stitch, feed dogs down, and I'm gonna follow my pattern here. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop there and then I'm gonna give myself a little tail that I'm gonna tuck under my, my quilting bit. And then I'm gonna hop over to my other pieces and do the same thing. I can tuck under with my darning. There we go. Do the same thing over here. And then finally, my last go over on this side.
Now I'm gonna tuck my threads under with a darning needle and come back and do some stippling in these areas here. Well, there's our project. I think it looks pretty cute. All right, hey, this was 10, so we've only got two more to go. Well, I hope you enjoyed making this month's block. Next month, we're gonna play around a little bit with a reverse applique, and we're gonna do a couple different things with that, so it'll give you some opportunities to learn applique, the uh, machine hand-guided applique way, as well as doing it all in your embroidery software and on your machine. Uh, we'll also explore, for those of you that have a Bernina 880 Plus, we'll explore using the Shape Maker to create a reversible applique design. So. Tune in for that, but in the meantime, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville, and there you can like, comment, and subscribe. So, you have a lot to do and a little time to do it in, so I'm going to leave you, but thank you for watching, and see you next time.